We're back in assembly, and this time the speaking I'll start again. <laughs> Peter Ryan. Hey, <laughs> the getting going is hard. <laughs> So, we're back at Assembly and we have James Wise, who we've met over the years. I've sort of nicknamed you the, the whack-a-mole of London because you've popped up in several places. Where has it been so far? Uh, so, Chatter Plate Espresso, Silkies, Troops and Hyde, and then outside of London in Edinburgh, uh, Hyde and Sun. Oh, that's something you did recently, right? Yeah, yep. So, just opened up that place, uh, San Remo Opera, V2, uh, Milk on a Peak, UK, all the good stuff. Nice. And your current Coffee Masters champ, so it's a hell of a year, really. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good year so far. So today we're going to be discussing not, not assembly coffee, but the other side, volcanoes, coffee pods. Yep, volcano at home. Um, so we released them this year at the London Coffee Festival. Uh, we were the first uh, company to release a bio-based, fully compostable pod. Um, and I guess we're going to do a taste test. Yeah. Um, and I can talk you through a little bit more about some of the sourcing and the reasonings behind why we chose to do this. Cool. Um, I've brought as a comparison, because it's always good to kind of, kind of benchmark. I know um, that Nespresso are the number one global coffee pod brand. And I guess it's a testament to the laziness of people that they want what they think is good instantly. And the price they pay is, I don't know, these things are really, really bad for the environment, aren't they? Yeah, and the price is so ridiculously low. So they're subsidising waste and garbage and really crap oh, quality. Yeah, massively, massively. But if you put George Clooney as their cover man, then everything looks cool, right? Okay, so we have our coffees. Should we start with the nice or with the other one? Let's go with the Nespresso first. Okay, I'm gonna try the Ethiopian, which they claim has fruitiness. And you've got Voluto. I don't know what that is. All I know is I think it's number three or four on the strength scale, which is something like a light rose. There's a kind of sweetness, but it's, it's, it's like a kind of hint of lemon. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. It's like, it's, there's definitely something a little bit more interesting. That one is just like... It's horrible. Yeah, it's really bland, very, very little body. It's like battery acid. It's, so this one, do you want to know what you're going to drink or do you just want to drink it and then see if you get what it is? Uh, yeah. This is balanced, so it's, basically how you want um, your average espresso to be. A little bit of acid. Yeah, I but see that. It's very, very well rounded. I am getting some fruitiness. Any Earthiness idea where it could be from? Let's have a look. No, I'm not sure, Ethiopia. Oh, I'm really surprised actually. That's where Brazil. Brazil? Yeah. Wow. And I don't know what this, this could be just a blend of a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of stuff. Because when you're making that many coffees globally, your demands mean that you can't ever be localized to one area. Yeah, it will be very, very difficult for them to get it all from one farm. Yeah. So we'll go bold next. This one we're expecting to be a little bit more sort of nutty, bigger body. Um, it's supposed to feel like you're drinking a strong coffee. Mm -hmm. Really sweet, again. Goes over the top. Yeah. Very sweet, almost caramel. And then round it again towards the finish. That's actually really nice. Any ideas about that? Colombia? Let's have a look. Spot on. Colombian. It's really nice. So it's supposed to have that intensity, that more sort of, well, caramel, caramelization, sugar browning type flavors. Mm -hmm. and you definitely get that, like you say, just like caramel kick, lots of cacao. So we'll go to the reserve. Mm. Very interesting, really complex. Crown that's still holding there. And again, very, very balanced. Where that one might be from? Mother? No. From Nicaragua. Nicaragua. 
Wow. So will the countries change on these three? They will, actually. So that one's switching over soon, the bold. That's going to be a new Colombian. Well, I hope people get the idea that when you get Volcano at home, pods, you're really getting into the whole third wave experience where they'll be changing up. There's all part of the sustainability thing. And the Nespresso pods is going to taste the same all year. The crap for the environment. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's that's the, the market it's aimed at is um, so many people want to get into specialty coffee, but it requires a lot of time or a lot of input into equipment. Um, and it ends up being quite pricey. The beauty of these are for, for very minimal investment, um, they can switch out something like the Nespresso for the Volcano at Home Pods, yeah. do something better for the environment, drink better coffee, and they haven't really had to invest any more money than they already have previously. Um, they're getting into specialty coffee without probably even knowing about it, which is, uh, which is quite nice, because the whole, the whole aim of all of these things is to educate the market, right? Yeah. And if a baseline for people that are drinking coffee is something like Nespresso, and we're able to present a product that not only tastes better, is sourced better, is better for the environment.